The boundary between science and the humanities has been obscured in our time by the lack of convention within the arts. There are no standards to be applied to the humanities, as there is no convention to hold those standards as universally accepted. There is no correct way to make a painting, a sculpture, a novel, or a film. Anything goes. Without a convention, and without an obvious ideology for a convention to endorse, the very definition of art becomes mysterious. Our notion of what art is can be generalized to include the aggregate of mass culture, and it can be specific to refer only to the rarefied world of contemporary art. This lack of a clear definition has led to scientific reflection on the arts. Dennis Dutton wrote about the evolutionary pressures which led to our artistic sensibilities in his book The Art Instinct. Richard Dawkins describes the humanities with an analogy to genes. He coined the word meme as a synthesis of mimesis and gene. In this way, one can look at the developments of culture through a perspective of natural selection. This is a scientific perspective that stands outside of the personal perspective. After all, we are the selectors of memes, as we decide what replicates by imitating successful works of art, by, pro by propagating successful art. So the analogy to genes stands outside of the perspective of the humanities. It depersonalizes art. Our aesthetic values do not figure into the perspective of culture offered by the meme analogy. When our own subjectivity is engaged in our analysis of art, we are dealing with, with what is referred to as the humanities. Roger Scruton uses an analogy of a painted portrait. A scientific analysis of this portrait may analyze different pigments in different places and may analyze the variation of texture across the surface of the canvas. But if you do not see the face, then you're not seeing the painting for what it is. So there are many attempts to bring a scientific understanding to art without first acknowledging the subjectivity inherent to our consideration of art, that this subjectivity is precisely what we choose to omit when we look at the world through the scientific eyepiece. Richard Dawkins presents the idea of the meme as an analogy to the gene, but it is an analogy. It is a literary device, an artistic device, you might say. And it doesn't get us far when we consider why work of art might be meaningful to us, why it is successful. So now that that distinction is made, I, I want to jump back into the scientific perspective with my own thought experiment so that we may reflect on its implications for the, the humanities. Let's imagine ourselves as our hunter-gatherer ancestors, searching for food in the Pleistocene. And we imagine encountering a footprint in the mud. We're not going to sniff the footprint like a dog. Obviously, our senses are not equipped to discern anything from that. When we study the footprint, we use our perceptive apparatus, and we do so in concert with a conceptual understanding of what's involved in what we are looking at. The physicality of the mud, the weight of the animal responsible for the footprint, the pace and direction in which it is going in, whether or not sand has blown into the depressions of the footprint indicating that it was done a few days ago, after the rain, but before the dust storm. These inferences are all included into the ensemble of information that is ascertained when we encounter the footprint. However, what we ascertain is an intuitive sense of where such an animal is. How far did it get, judging by the perceived age of the footprint? It is, is something that we feel. We don't translate this information as computable data. We don't determine through calculations where this animal went. We feel where the animal is. We feel the animal as a lack and we pursue it. So now that we have an example of the kind of selection pressure responsible for the evolution of a human being capable of painting and capable of enjoying and refining the nuance involved in painting, when we look at art, our senses operate with this same acute awareness that draws upon our innate sense of space. It, it, it's obviously not just that our vision is adequate, compared to other animals it is nothing exceptional, but it operates in concert with the mind and our a priori understanding of space.
And I raise this example to further illuminate the distinction between science and the humanities. We see the footprint and we feel the prey responsible for it. In a sense, we feel the footprint as a rough estimation of where the prey is.